Okay, it looks like we got, uh, got a good crowd here. Uh, welcome to the candidate forum for the 2022 election. My name is Monique Reynolds and I am currently on the board and it has been my pleasure this year to be the uh, chair for the, the candidate nominations. Um, today is not unlike other years that we've had. Uh, we are going to get to listen to our candidates here. What we're going to do is um, they'll each have five minutes. Oh, oh. Can you the center so that you can see? No, I don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I decide. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Fine. How's that? <laughs> okay. Then I can read my notes too. Uh, so anyway, the process for today is uh, that we are going to have the opportunity to hear from each of our candidates. Uh, we have five candidates who will be running for this year's election. Um, we this year have four seats we need to fill. Three will be three full time or uh, full term, three year terms, and one will be a replacement of one year term. Uh, just for your information, ballots will be going out on February 4th. So look for those in your mail. And then of course, at the annual meeting, we'll get the, uh, the election done. Um, by now you've been able to see a little bit about the candidates. They've had their biographies and their um, articles in the Territory Times. And hopefully you've been able to have a little bit of uh, interaction with them around the territory. Although at 17 below, I don't know that anybody's really been out that much. Um, our process for today is I will introduce each of the candidates. We'll go in alphabetical order. Um, each one will have five minutes to give you their statement. Uh, Mr. Kaiser is enjoying the sunshine in Florida. So he is going to join us via video um, and uh, he'll, we'll have his at the very end. Um, as, you're, as you're listening to the candidates, um, I would just kind of take a note of things that you might want to ask them, because once we finish the program, as far as the live presentation of the statements, they will each go to one of their tables. Oh, that's better. Um, they'll go to an individual table so that you can have some discussion, ask questions, meet them, um, show them the Galena terri territory neighborliness that we have here. A um, couple of things from a housekeeping standpoint. If you would all make sure to silence your cell phones, uh, just to make sure that we don't have any distractions uh, in, in each of the candidates time. And also uh, for those of us who are not that comfortable with uh, public speaking. If you can stay seated, uh, it's a distraction for candidates when they're speaking um, uh, to have people walking around and stuff. So if you can kind of uh, make sure you've got your coffee and all that before we get started with the actual statements, that'd be great. Um, the last thing that I would say is, oh, you know, there's gonna be timers in the back. Uh, I'll keep this up for you guys. So as you're doing your, uh, your statement, and you have to come up here too, <laughs> look in the back and they will tell you uh, how, many, how much time you have left for each of your statements, okay? Um, I'd like to take a minute to thank these folks for stepping up to uh, run for the election. <laughs> My time's up. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a worthwhile job, definitely. You get to meet a lot of folks and get a lot of things done. I've learned a ton. So I thank you all for stepping up and, and going into this election. And I'm gonna leave you with a couple of things in regard to volunteerism. I found a couple of quotes that I thought were really interesting. Um, the first one, volunteerism is the ultimate act of democracy. You vote in elections once a year. 
When you volunteer, you vote every day for the kind of community that you want to live in. Um, the other one that I thought was really interesting is volunteers don't necessarily have the time, they just have the heart. So um, thank you and we'll get started. Uh, Ms. Bogacki, this is Mary Ann Bogacki. She is the first candidate to give her statement here today. Good morning, and thank you for attending the candidate forum today. My name is Mary Ann Bogacki, and I live at 11 Harbor Drive. I am a registered nurse who spent most of my career working in women's health for the largest privately owned practice, medical practice in Illinois. In my final five years of employment there, I was the director of risk management. As a member of the senior management team, I work closely with our board of directors to develop policies and procedures to ensure the safety and deliver safety of our patients and deliver quality care. I retired after 22 years with that same practice in December of 2020. I also served on the school board of our parish school. Soon after retiring, I began volunteering to give COVID-19 vaccines at vaccine clinics in Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. In 1989, my husband Mike and I were introduced to the Galena territory by friends of ours whose family had a house out here. Later that same year, we rented a house here, and by the end of that week, we had found our happy place. We have owned our home for 32 years. Our three daughters grew up spending time, spending weekends and vacations, enjoying all that the Galena Territory has to offer. They are all grown up now with families of their own. Our grandchildren now love coming out here and spending time with us. Our retirement and the growth of our family has only strengthened my commitment and connection to the Galena Territory. My love for the Galena Territory is what led me to running for a position on the board. I have seen many changes in the last 32 years. Once we were the only occupied home on Harbor Drive. Now Harbor Drive has become a vibrant neighborhood complete with a very well attended black party. I feel very lucky to be able to spend time here. When I was considering putting my name forward as a candidate, I researched the qualities needed for a person to be a good candidate for a board of a homeowners association. The attribute most often mentioned was love of the community and the desire to see it succeed. Now that I am retired and our family has grown and settled, I have the time and the energy to devote to that position. I love this community and want to ensure that it stays a wonderful place for people to live. You may wonder why a retired nurse would want to serve on the board. I hope I have shed some light on my motivations. Further, I believe it is important for, a variety, for people from a variety of backgrounds to sit on the board to encourage diversity of thoughts and ideas. As a member of the GTA board, I will work on improving communication between the board and the GTA members. As a nurse, I was an advocate for my patients, listening to their concerns and opinions on their health care and empowering them to make informed choices. I see that as the role of a board member. The board also needs to ensure that members are fully informed about the important work that the board is doing. The Marina project will be a major focus of the board in the next few years and is a large financial undertaking. I understand that our members have strong feelings about the project and rightfully so. As your board member, I will hold true to my fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the property owners. I will be open and transparent in my actions. We have a lot of work to do. I will do my best for the GTA and I would appreciate your vote in the upcoming election. Thank you, Mary Ann. Our next candidate is Mr. Michael Ducharme, who will give us his uh, five minutes of wisdom now. <laughs> Good morning. 
Thanks for coming out today. I'm Michael Ducharme, and my wife and I, and my wife Nancy and I live at 4 Tamarack Road. We purchased our home in 2015 and have been permanent residents for the past two years. It took us all of two years to remodel our home before we moved here permanently. And I think it's important to note that we went through the entire process, getting all the permits and whatever we needed to get approvals uh, by the GTA. We love living here and take advantage of all the amenities that the GTA offers. My wife and I have two horses and I can't say enough about having the Shenandoah facility and the riding trails available for use by members and those who visit. Having the natural resources of the lake and the green space, in addition to the other amenities, is what continues to draw property owners and guests to this special place. It takes all of the members of the GTA, permanent owners, part-time owners, and the owners of rental properties to continue to make the territory and Eagle Ridge thrive. In the past two years, I have seen positive changes in how the GTO, GTA board operates, eliminating a majority of the infighting and working to, to develop with staff a plan to continue to move the GTA forward. That was important to me in making my decision to run for the board. I have also seen the positive changes made by Eagle Ridge in upgrading and enlarging the store and gas facilities and the building of a new spa. Navigating the pandemic, I have never seen so much real estate activity within the territory. Properties being bought and sold, property values appreciating, and new and existing owners improving properties that haven't been updated in years. This needs to continue to allow everyone's home and or investment to continue to appreciate and continue to draw people to the territory. Change going forward is inevitable. We need to continue to plan for updating our existing facilities and make the improvements necessary to attract people year round. This past year, it was so nice to have entertainment down at the marina. The rodeo was a huge success. Events like these, as well as all of the special events planned throughout the year need to continue. I feel my experience in municipal finance, as well as my experience in developing and funding capital plans would be beneficial to the board. But aside from that, I consider myself personable, approachable, and willing to listen to both sides of a story. I would strive to build consensus, to compromise when necessary to reach a decision and then move forward. In doing so, I understand there are costs associated with everything the board approves. We all pay annual assessments and I can assure you that I will always work to make sure that the members receive value for the assessments they are required to pay. Being on the board requires a large commitment of time but I am willing to put in the time, hear from the members related to issues, read the material presented and be present for scheduled meetings. I also believe there should be quarterly or at least semi-annual town hall meetings going forward to have a better understanding of the needs or concerns of the members. I, be I believe that gets lost in the regular business being conducted. Thanks for your time, and I would love to have your vote to be a member of the GTA board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ducharme. Our next candidate is Mr. Richard Moss. Rich, can we call you Rich? Absolutely. <laughs> Rich is up next. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. good morning. I said good morning. This is our GTA. Let's go. Okay, thanks for being here. I understand I'm supposed to start by saying my name and our property address. So I'm Rich Moss. Our home is at 10 Summit Pass. Did I meet the requirements, Susan? 
Okay, that's the hard part, all downhill from here. Um, I don't actually think I've ever run for anything in my life. Maybe back in Boy Scouts when we decided to control the year, the system control the year. Maybe then. But the point is, I don't have a lot of experience running on these things. But I understand you're supposed to have something called a platform. So I looked up what a platform was and looked at the dictionary. So it's supposed to something to stand on, which of course I thought was the floor. <laughs> or my piece, or the fall is piece stand. But a little bit further, there also said it's something you can stand for. Not just time, but stand for. That I get. That I get. That I understand, because that's what we want to do here. We want to do things for each other. So also I believe that sometimes it's more important what others say about you than what you want to say about yourself. Not that what you say about yourself is wrong, but you could have somebody else's perspective. So I'm going to tell you this whole story as it relates to us here in the GTA. As you may know, I've been on legal bylaws for several years. There was a time when I submitted my application and it wasn't approved. So I'm disappointed, but I also understand that the, uh, you know, the manager gets pick his or her players. So I wrote some notes to some folks that I hadn't worked with for years and told them, hey, I didn't make the cut this year. I'm disappointed, but that's how life goes. And uh, see you around sometime. I got several notes back. Okay, same we're gonna miss you too. But the one that stand out a lot to me was from, uh, from Ken Ferraro. I'm gonna read right from his email here to me. This is Rich. I'm disappointed that you won't be on the commission. I also enjoyed working with you. I always felt you had the best interest of the association in your heart. I repeat that part. Now, this is a man who I either didn't know or barely knew. I worked with several years side by side to keep this very place of ours running. He wrote that he felt I had the best interest of the association in your heart. I think that's something you'd like to make for a candidate. So, how much time do I have? Okay, that's fine. So, yes, please remember that. Okay, when uh, when you take your vote, when you decide to take the vote, and do please vote for whoever you feel is best for our very, very wonderful association. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Uh, our next candidate is uh, Joe White, currently serving on the board and looking for a, another term. I would need to pick this up also. Can you guys hear me? Am I loud enough right now? All right. Yeah. Thank you. So good morning all and thank you for coming and or watching on the computer. My name is Joe White. I live at 60 Little Lane and I am a candidate for the Board of Directors and I'm currently on it. I was appointed a year ago to fulfill a vacancy in the board and I have not served a full term yet. Right now I'm asking for your votes for the board again because I believe that I have worked for the community the way I said I would originally. What I said was that the overarching goals of the board has to be more than just reining in finances but rather to make sure we meet our mission of a place where people want to come to visit, they want to stay, they want to live, they want to work, and definitely they want to play. And that's what we need to make sure that we are doing here. I currently work in the mental health field, and I can tell you the importance of play and how much it helps us all rejuvenate and helps us all with peace of mind. And that's why a lot of us have moved to this area to enjoy the nature and the peace of the mind and what we have. Um, I've also only worked for nonprofits and understand the need to control our costs. I believe I have helped reduce costs, supported all types of owners equally, and made as informed decisions as possible. When it comes to informed decisions, one thing I mentioned in the Territory Times that is concerned to me is the loss of institutional knowledge or the ignorance of it. Past work done by former committees and board members should be reviewed and included in any future actions from the board. This is where adhering to long range planning and adding specifics to it is needed and it would benefit all concerned. 
it shouldn't be a reset when we hire a new board, we vote in a new board. It should be adding on information to what we already have to make those best formed decisions. Making informed decisions also means ensuring that we're gathering the right data to base decisions on. This includes ensuring that surveys for large scale projects, as well as amenity or use of service fees are accurate and current. So without that knowledge, we're just making assumptions and owners deserve a lot better than assumptions. They deserve to know that what we're doing is going to make a positive difference to our community. So many good intended decisions can have lasting negative consequences on all of us. So I am really cautious about wording in any motion or rule to some people's on committees I work on chagrin when I mentioned that I don't want any live monkeys running around in the owner's club. It's a long debate that we had about wording about what constitutes a pet versus what constitutes an animal versus what constitutes what. And I will, there, there are small hills that I will die on just to make sure that we get it right. You know, last year I spoke to the territory where we asked people to come to for a visit and stay for lifestyle depends on our unique blend of owners. I believe Michael mentioned this also, that we have lots of different types of owners, whether it is full-time, part-time owners, vacation homes, uh, or renters. Currently, our bylaws and government documents only talk about one set of owner and their guests. One set. I know that there's current concerns that the amenities are being abused by some and that the board voted to get that better data. I voted to get the data collection to allow the board to create rules that address abusers and are enforceable. All of our current rules and all future ones are gonna come down to enforceability. If we cannot enforce a rule, then only those who are willingly following it or willing to go along with it are actually gonna pay any type of price. This was part of a problem I felt with the parking passes as well as other ideas. Enforceability is gonna to continue to be one of our main obstacles as well as our main necessity that we need to do for any change for access to services or amenities or any type of thing that we do. I spoke at the beginning about my attempt to limit costs. I've done this by proposing multiple motions that estimates for costs becomes caps. Now why this doesn't seem much when we have small amounts, but when it comes to something like the Marina project where an estimate drops from $4 million lower, and that becomes a new cap, that's where small changes can make big differences. During my time on the board, I've shown that I've worked well with others to move things forward and speak up when something doesn't make sense, and I'll continue to do so. What you'll see from me are motions that have a chance of passing, amendments to motions, for clarity and communication to owners, and have integrity of consistency of how I practice. So I mentioned before that I'd like to focus on protecting the, the environment that we have. I want you to take away that I want to continue to do well for the community. I really want to ask you for your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, our next candidate is going to be up on the screen. Dave Kaiser has recorded his a uh, his statement ahead of time, so we'll take a minute to watch that. Good morning. My name is Dave Kaiser, and I live at 11 Rapids Drive, and I'm a candidate for the GTA Board of Directors. First of all, I want to thank the association for this opportunity to serve and thank those that have supported me as director the previous three years. Debbie and I have owned our home in the territory for the past nine and a half years, full time since September 2018. Previously, our family vacationed in the area for over 20 years. Debbie and I both enjoy the landscape, outdoor activities, the relaxed space of life and the people, and so are those of the area. I have a BS and MS in electrical engineering from Illinois Institute of Technology. I've also earned an MBA from the University of Chicago. Some of what I've learned along the way, problem solving, look at the data, be open-minded, take different perspectives. 
In my career, I've been a research engineer for high-speed manufacturer, American Can, a new product development engineer for high-tech communications company, Motorola Solutions, and an R&D program manager for multinational healthcare company, Baxter. I have invented products and led project teams on inventing products, small teams, large teams, co-located and across continents. These experiences develop skills, leading, listening, team building, respect and flexibility. Along the way, I volunteered in my community of Deer Park to be a village trustee. During my 11 year tenure, I gained experience with budgets, roads and drains, parks and landscaping, public safety, large projects such as shopping centers, office parks, and townhome communities. I work with fellow village leaders in the Barrington Area Council of Governments on common policy and actions for the Barrington area. As a GTA director, I have served on the architecture review, budget and finance, civic affairs, and marketing. I have led propane advisory, nominating committee, and long-range planning commission. I have served as president of the board this past year, leading our board and staff in exercising their duties and in launching exciting initiatives for our association. Along the way, I've been fortunate to work with very talented individuals on the board, on the GTA staff, on our committees, commissions, and, and advisors. What can I bring to the association as a member of the board of directors in the future? Well, for one, I have no specific agenda other than to do what is best for the association. Second, I try to approach all of my activities with the highest integrity and excellence. Third, I do my best to respect everyone. Practicing these will demonstrate that I'm a person that can be trusted, trusted to do as he says and say what he does. I'm a critical thinker. I look for the data and the information and use that in decision-making. I'm highly organized and have good planning skills for my experience as a program manager. I believe in two-way communication, working as a member of a team, constructively debating the issues and supporting the decisions. All useful skills for leading initiatives, reviewing plans, reports or financial statements, and for working as a member of the board. What initiatives are important to me? For one, the improvements to the Marina Pavilion and Marina Park. Second, the updating of the GTA access card system in order to improve data on the entrance and use of our facilities. Also important to me are the improvements to the amenity master plan and capital planning processes. Thank you again for your time. Again, my name is Dave Kaiser. I ask for your vote. I welcome your questions and comments. You can be reached at email dkaiser at the or at phone 224 406 Four three nine nine. Okay. All right, that, include, that concludes our candidate statements. Now I encourage you all. Um, all of the candidates have been designated an email address for the Galena Territory. So if there are questions that you think of once you leave here, you can find uh, their email addresses on the website or in the most current Territory Times. Uh, for now, they're going to break out to their individual table. And I encourage you to uh, meet each of them. If you have specific questions that have come up after their presentations, take a few minutes to talk about that and enjoy some of the goodies that we have here, coffee, drinks, and some treats. Thank you for attending, and uh, good luck to all of our candidates. Thank you.